Hi guys, this is Drew the SDSU EE Tutor and in this video we're going to go over second order differential circuits. I want to cover a sample problem that clearly goes through all the steps involved uh, in solving these circuits so that we know exactly where all the numbers are coming from and exactly where we're pulling our equations. So let's get started. Alright, so here's our problem. We've got a 3 volt battery, two 3 ohm resistors, a switch that opens at time equal to zero, another 3 ohm resistor, one Henry inductor, and then a one farad capacitor. The problem says they want the current through the inductor at zero plus, the voltage across the capacitor at zero plus, the current through the capacitor at zero plus, di on dt for the inductor at zero plus, di on dt for the capacitor at zero plus, and then finally they want us to solve the circuit and give them v of t for time greater than zero. The first thing we need to do is take a look at the circuit at time less than zero. So we're going to rely on the fact that inductors can't change current instantaneously and capacitors can't change voltage instantaneously. Meaning I of L zero minus is equal to I of L zero plus. All right, this is the guy that we're looking for and if we solve the circuit before time equal to zero then that'll give us that answer. All right, and same thing for voltage. Zero minus is going to equal V of zero plus. All right, so at time less than zero, this switch is slammed shut. So the circuit is closed and has been like this for a long, long time, meaning that it is in steady state. All right, so in steady state, we have inductor short, right, and capacitors open. So this, sh this should make things a little bit easier to solve for our current and our voltage. Now let's see, so if we are looking for the voltage across this capacitor, well that's real easy because we just created a short circuit right here. All right, so the voltage across this capacitor has to be zero. All right, so this guy is zero volts. Now the current through this inductor if we take a look at the path that electricity will flow, um, the current will come up through here, and then boom, once it hits this wire, it will see that there's a short circuit, come around and go to the back side of the battery. All right, so we've got three volts. It's only passing through this one three ohm resistor. So V equals IR. Right, V is 3, I, and then R is 3. Divide both sides by 3, current is going to be equal to 1 amp. Right, so this equals 1 amp. So this equals 1 amp. This equals 0 volts. Now, to get our other initial conditions, we need to look at time greater than zero. Okay, so at time greater than zero, this switch will open. Right, and that means that no electricity from the battery is going to make it to this side of the circuit. Right, so this side of the circuit is basically gone. So this is our circuit at time greater than zero, and we are looking for the current through the capacitor. Right, so this guy. And the current through a capacitor can change instantaneously, so we can't rely on the old relationships uh, like in finding the first two. So we need to find an equation where we can figure out what this guy is. So something that looks pretty useful here would be 
uh, making this a node, right, and then saying that all the currents in have to equal all the currents out. Or another way of saying that is all the currents have to sum to zero. So this is our voltage V. Right, and notice that these three are in parallel. So the voltage across this capacitor is indeed this voltage at this node. Right, so current going this way, that would be V over three. Right, that would be I on this branch. Uh, and then this would be the current through the capacitor. So this would be, or current through the inductor. So I of L plus current through the capacitor. Right, and this should all sum to zero. And now it looks like we have an equation uh, that we might possibly be able to solve, solve for because the current through the inductor we solved for previously. All right, we said the current through the inductor is one amp. So this is now one. And then the voltage, we said that the voltage of this capacitor was zero. So zero over three just gives you zero. So zero plus plus I of C equals zero. A little bit of algebra and you get I of C is equal to negative one amp. This equals negative one amp. Okay, so now we need to find this guy, right? Di on dt for the inductor. You're like, crap, how are we going to find that? Well, if you remember, if we take a look at our best friends, uh, we might be able to find a relationship where we can figure out di on dt. Right, so for an inductor, we are looking at this guy, right? We want di on dt, and we know what the voltage is, right? So if we go back, this voltage here is the voltage of the capacitor, and we said that this was at zero volts. So V equals LDI on dt. We said zero equals L di on dt. So divide both sides by L. All right, this goes away. Zero over L is just zero, so di on dt equals zero. So this equals zero amps per second. Right? Notice the units here. Amps per second. This is current over time. So now we need to find this guy. And this problem is a perfect example of why you need to do tons and tons and tons of practice problems before the exam. Is by finding this they use kind of a clever trick so this is why you need to make sure you're doing sample problems at home and not just saying, oh, I know how to do it because I understand the concepts. All right, so to find this guy, let's set up that equation that we just had where we said uh, V over 3 is equal to, or V over 3 plus I of the inductor plus I of the capacitor equals zero. Okay, now let's take the derivative of both sides of the equation. All right, so this prime and this prime. So this will just be one-third dv on dt plus di of l on dt plus di c on dt and this is still going to be equal to zero
Okay, so we just solved for this, and we said that this was zero amps per second. So this goes away. All right, that is zero. Um, and now things are looking pretty good because we've got di uh, on dt for the capacitor in an equation, except we don't know what dv on dt is. But fear not, if we go to our best friends, there is an equation that has dv on dt for a capacitor uh, already here. That equation says I is equal to C D V on D T. Okay, capacitance is one farad. And we said that the current going through this branch, or the current going through the capacitor, we just solved for that. It was negative one. Right? So negative one equals one because the capacitance is one times dv on dt or dv on dt equals just negative one so now we can plug in this into this equation giving us one-third times negative one plus di on dt of the capacitor has to equal zero. So this will be negative one third, right? And then if you add one third to both sides, then this will go away over here, and then you'll have one third over here. And di on dt for the capacitor will equal one third. So this equals one third and that's in amps per second. And that's that's all of our initial conditions. And the reason why you need initial conditions is when you go to this guy and try to solve the circuit, you'll find that you can't figure out what certain constants are. So you need these initial conditions to be able to plug numbers back in so that you can solve for constants. And we'll see that as we're solving for this.